Hi everybody, today in lab this week we're going to focus on the acid, the solid unknown that you isolated um, the last time that you were in lab. We're going to purify that and because it's a solid we're going to purify it using recrystallization. So just as a quick review, in order to recrystallize a solid what you have to do is dissolve it in a hot solvent and then allow it to cool down slowly. And as it does cool down, the solubility of the solid decreases, and so it precipitates back out. For this week in lab, what you need to be able to do is first figure out what the best solvent is for your acid, and you do have three different choices. It could be pure water, it could be pure ethanol, or it may turn out that you need to have a mixture of water and ethanol. Um, and you're going to be running the test to determine which is the best choice for your particular acid. Don't forget, each of you um, has a different acid. So what works for one person may not work for another one because the solubilities of the unknowns is quite variable. So to run the solvents of tests, the first thing that we're going to do is test the pure solvents, the pure water and the pure methanol. The way that you're going to do that is you're going to put about 10 milligrams of your unknown into a test tube. And then to that 10 milligrams of unknown, you're going to add 10 drops of just room temperature deionized water. And you're going to shake it and you're going to see, does that solid dissolve? Um, so it's either going to dissolve or it's not going to. If it does dissolve in room temperature, then that means that this is not a good solvent solvent system because when you cool it you're not going to be able to recover the solid it's going to stay dissolved in the water if it does not dissolve this is a positive sign that pure water may be the right solvent choice for you so we're not going to say absolutely yes but we're going to say maybe we're going to continue looking at pure water at the same time, you're going to be running the same test with another 10 milligram sample of acid, but this time you're going to be adding room temperature ethanol to see how that one reacts with your solid. So again, you're going to add 10 drops of it at room temperature and you're going to see whether it dissolves or not. If it does dissolve, then ethanol is not the appropriate solvent. And if it doesn't dissolve, if you still have your solid there, then yeah, ethanol might be an appropriate solvent for you. So if you have ruled out one of the two of these um, because it did completely dissolve the solid, you're just going to stop working with that pure one. You've already ruled it out as a potential recrystallization solvent. But you're going to look at the other ones, the ones where they did not dissolve and there was still solid, and you're going to move it through the next step. And so the next step is, well, if it's a solid at room temperature, that's great. I know in the end I'll be able to get my solid back but what about heating it does it actually dissolve the solid and so you're going to heat your test tubes and see um, you're just going to heat it in a hot water bath on a hot plate make sure that you do add a boiling stick to the test tube and you're going to see does it dissolve or does it not dissolve if it does dissolve again maybe this is the appropriate solvent for you if it doesn't dissolve when you've heated it in the warm water bath, then no, this is not an appropriate solvent because you're, it's not soluble when it's hot. So you're not going to be able to remove any of the impurities. So for the maybe one, the one that did dissolve when it was hot, we need to do one last check and that check is to make sure that it actually does re-solidify when you cool it down. So you're just going to throw the test tube into an ice water bath and see, does it solidify? And the reason we're doing this is just kind of a double check to make sure that something odd didn't happen when you were trying it at room temperature. Maybe you didn't give it enough time or maybe it didn't mix well enough. So you're just going to test it to see one more time, make sure that you do actually get solid back. If it does solidify, then great, you have found a good solvent. You found a solvent that um, dissolves it when it's hot and then precipitates the solid back out when it cools down. If it does not solidify, well, it turns out that probably when you were doing it at room temperature, before you heated it up, if you had left it a little bit longer, it actually would have fully dissolved, which means that this is not a good solvent for you. 
So hopefully, and for a lot of you, this is going to be the case. You're going to find that one of the two solvents, ethanol or water, is a good solvent for you. It's going to dissolve the stuff hot and it's going to precipitate the solid back out as you cool it. If that is what you find, there is a good one there, then absolutely use it. You do not have to do the mixed system. Um, however, what some of you are going to find is that you've got one solvent that is too good. And by too good, what we need is that it dissolves both at room temperature and hot. So this means that it's too good of a solvent for your solid. Um, on the other side, what you will find is that the other one is actually too bad. And by too bad, we mean it never dissolves. Whether it's cool or hot, the solid does not dissolve. If that is the case, then what you're going to have to do is test to see whether a mixture of the two solvents will work for you. And so we're going to run this on a test on the small scale first, just to make sure that it's going to work for you. And if it does, then you're going to use the mixed solvent recrystallization method. This does have to be performed on a new 10 milligram sample. So rack up a third test tube. Um, and now here's how we're gonna do this. Basically what this is, is a small scale mixed solvent recrystallization. The first thing that you're going to do is dissolve your 10 milligram sample in just enough heated to good solvent. So we want this to be as saturated as possible, but we do want it to all be dissolved and it does have to be hot at this point. So make sure that you preheat your solvent. Once you've gotten it to completely dissolve, you're going to add the bad solvent drop by drop by drop until the solution starts to get cloudy. And that cloudiness is just a little bit of your acid starting to precipitate back out. So you've now changed your solubility over from soluble to insoluble. And so that's a positive sign. Um, you've been able to start this recrystallization process, but remember, we don't want this to happen when it's hot. We want this to happen when it's cool. So what we need to do is kind of tip the scale again and make it all redissolve. The way that we're going to do this is more of the good solvent again drop by drop by drop until it just clears up so once you've gotten it to re-dissolve again you're going to stop adding solvent and you're going to take that test tube and you're going to throw it into an ice water bath and see do you get your solid back out of it if yes then that's great. You have just proved that you can use a mixed solvent system to recrystallize your acid. If for some reason the mixed solvent system does not work, then at this point what you should do is consult with your instructor to find out what's going wrong and hopefully they can help you figure out how to recrystallize your acid. So, just to remind you guys of how you recrystallize using just one single pure solid, this is the same thing that you did when you recrystallized your acetanilide. The first thing you're going to do is heat up your solvent to nearly boiling, and you're going to add that solvent to your acid very slowly until you see that your acid has just dissolved. And so, remember, you want this to be a saturated solution. If you add more solvent beyond the point of saturation, all you're going to do is destroy your percent recovery. Once you've gotten it all to dissolve, you're going to take the flask off the hot plate, put it on your bench until it's cooled to room temperature. Once it's at room temperature, you're going to make it even colder to try and get more solid out of it by cooling it in an ice bath. And then you're going to isolate your solid using vacuum filtration. And that's it, you've recrystallized it. Then you're just going to put it into a pre-weighed beaker and let it dry through the week and you'll get a dry yield next week when you come into lab. If you're using the mixed solvent system, it's actually, it's just a larger scale version of what you did in the test tube. It is exactly the same steps. So you're gonna put your acid into a flask and you are going to add enough of your hot good solvent to just dissolve your acid. 
Now, once that has dissolved, you're going to add the bad solvent. And again, this has to be hot until you see that it, the solution just starts to turn cloudy. That again, remember that is your acid starting to precipitate back out, but you want this to actually be completely dissolved when it's hot. So you're going to add drop by drop by drop some of the good solvent back to the flask until it just clarifies. At that point, you're done. You've created that saturated solution of your acid. You're going to take it off the hot plate, let it cool on your bench. Then when it's at room temperature, you're going to cool it on an ice bath. And then just like the other people, you are going to recover your solid through vacuum filtration. Now what I want to do really quickly is just give you some reminders of things that you should have learned during the recrystallization lab. Um, so the first thing, your acids, um, many of them actually have low enough melting points that the surface of the hot plate itself is capable of melting them. So you want to make sure that's not happening by keeping the flask in motion. You want to make sure you're not allowing that solid acid to sit um, on top of the hot plate or else it's going to melt. If it melts, it's not going to dissolve. That's something that we call oiling out. Second reminder, if, whenever you are heating something, especially in an organic solvent, you always want to make sure that you're adding a boiling chip or a boiling stick. We're using a boiling stick because that is a um, pure material than a boiling chip. If you don't have solid after you have set your flask on the bench to let it cool to room temperature, don't put it on ice. Go ahead and scratch the inside of the flask with a scupula or a glass rod to try and form an initial nucleation site inside the flask. If you do not see solid forming, when you do that scratching, then you should see your instructor or lab assistant. Um, so that's just repeating that. And that is really it for lab this week. You guys have done a recrystallization already. So this is really just adding in the possibility of doing a mixed solvent system. Uh, so good luck. And there will be another video next week showing you guys how we're going to purify the neutral unknown. Bye.